Hello everyone! I hope you are all having a fantastic Thursday. Um, I am glad to be joining you again this morning just to discuss the next method that um, in, in the list that I'm going through. Today we will be talking about Montessori homeschooling. I anticipate a couple of people joining, so I'm going to give it another, another minute here to see. But before I get started, let me introduce myself and tell you some exciting things that are coming up. My name is Brandy Cottrell. I was a public school teacher for 10 years. I taught special education. And towards the end of my career as a teacher, I became a teacher trainer. So I supported other teachers <clears throat> in, um, basically I supported them in doing anything they needed in their classroom as far as curriculum, student behavior support, and um, organizing scheduling, organizing their classroom setup as a whole. So I just start, decided to start taking all of these things that I learned to support homeschooling families since I now stay at home and homeschool my three boys. So um, I love planning and organizing, which is a big reason why I am doing this. I love, I love supporting other parents who are in the journey of homeschooling and or considering the journey of homeschooling. So we will get started today with um, my fourth video in the series of <clears throat> different homeschooling methods. So before I actually talk about the Montessori method, I want to tell you some really exciting things that are coming up. Um, as many of you know, I'm trying to get to my presentation here. As many of you know already, I will be presenting a couple more classes in this homeschooling series. Today we're looking at Montessori. We'll also be reviewing unit studies and then finishing up this series with talking about unschooling, which is a very hot topic in the homeschooling community. There are a lot of misconceptions about unschooling, so we want to, I want to clear those up and talk about what it is and what it is not. I also have some upcoming classes to help you determine how to just get started with homeschooling and an upcoming class to look at how to plan for your year. Now, these two classes will be one-time sessions that I will be doing. There are so many families right now that I am interacting with who are considering toying with the idea of homeschooling next year because of the pandemic and everything that is going on. And I feel that they, these families could really benefit from support to get started. Um, more exciting, what I'm more excited about is some upcoming series that I will be doing. Now these series will be um, a mix of variety, a mix of presentations. It will be probably some live videos. It will also be some pre-recorded videos. Um, and one of them is going to be from confused to confident. I am going to be sharing some of the best tips for becoming um, a teacher at home, adapting curriculum, actually teaching, interacting with your student, your children, and assessing. How do I do all of that like a trained educator? Do you need to be a trained educator to homeschool? Absolutely not. But having those tools in your toolbox when you start to feel frustrated 
when you know you need to change something could be very helpful. And then I will also be starting a series called Tips for Today. These are going to be short tips that um, will help you build a lesson out of anything you have in your home today. You know, purchasing materials. I'm going to walk you through the issue of standards that we looked at when we talked about traditional homeschooling. How can I pick and pull to teach my child immediately in potentially a short-term setting if I need to for next year? So be watching for some ads coming up for those two new series, which I am excited about. Okay getting started with Montessori method. Montessori method um, is often overlooked as a homeschooling method. And it's overlooked because we see it more as a private school, um, a, a private school philosophy. You are seeing this method being introduced to public schools more often, which is fantastic. So it focuses on the use of free movement and unstructured time. When you're utilizing a Montessori philosophy, your child is the teacher and you are simply a guide. As the parent, you are giving indirect instruction and you are providing very rich manipulatives and materials for them to explore. It is an interest-based um, philosophy, so you are focusing solely on what your child is interested in. You're giving them, again, lots of choices, and it is really an ideal philosophy for homeschooling because you it mirrors a home. The, ha the Montessori method makes your home an instructional facility by everything that you have there. It's a lot of touch, it's a lot of play, and it's a lot of that self-exploration with the teacher as a guide. Today, um, let's look at some Montessori schedules, which is kind of an oxymoron because the child is the guy, is the, the teacher in this situation, in this method, Schedules are going to be very um, individual based on what that child is interested in and what they're moving forward with. So you might see when you're dealing with the Montessori method more of um, units or an idea of the types of materials I'm going to provide for that week or for that month for my child to explore and see what they are interested in, to see what they like, what do they kind of hit on as an interest. I'm gonna pull up a sample schedule, might I say, for Montessori. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> it, they are loosely based schedules. This particular family is, I know that's blurry for you, um, but you can always just Google schedules yourself. But this particular family is looking at themes for every month, okay? They are going to provide materials that support the themes that they've chosen within each month. Now, as far as reading skills, math skills, you might feel that this looks more like a unit study, but you're going to have manipulatives in addition to these theme-based um, concepts that allow the child to kind of go from where they are and from what they know and grow on that based on what they're interested in doing or playing with. So here would be another schedule that I can show you. This one's a little bit more structured um, you can see they have a general idea of what they plan to do, some outside time, reading. Again, this would be very child-led. So if the child wants you to read a story, they might bring you a story. You might put out some letters 
that they could play with if they're interested in that. You might have a variety of books, maybe on your topic, off your topic, laid out and allow them to determine which they find interest in. They move on to, um, you see like sets of skills. So fine motor skills, gross motor skills. And again, you are going to provide them with a variety of choices to see what they're interested in. Once they make a choice, you're not going to then limit those the options and the materials you have out because obviously you always want them to have the option to switch the materials that they're working with and to switch the concepts that they're learning. So those are, you know, are a very flexible schedule, very loosely formed schedule that you're, that you're using as you, if you're implementing a Montessori method. Some pros and cons. Um, and again, like I said, cons as in considerations, things you might want to think of. As I noted, as I said before, Montessori method is a fantastic homeschooling method. It is not commonly used, um, but it lends itself ideally to the home setting because of the flexibility and the use of natural materials of everything we have in our home to build learning. Montessori method can easily be implemented with multiple ages, which is fantastic because it is very child led. So you have a lot of independent play, a lot of unstructured play. So with multiple children, you often have older children teaching the younger children. And you see this in the private and public school, method, public school setting as well. So that's a great bonus for this method. It is very play-based and tactile, so some of you will love that for your little ones. You'll see sensory bins, you'll see lots of building materials, um, things they can touch, things they can move to encourage the learning. Another benefit that I see of this method is it lends itself to both children with special needs and children with some very advanced skills. Because it is child-led, you're really moving at the pace of your student or your child, and you're allowing them to guide that progress that they're making. Um, <clears throat> it is based around art, creativity, which some parents love. I am not the most of creative people, I will tell you, so I struggle with that. Um, but some parents are are artistic in themselves and would love to pass that on to their children. Some considerations you need to take in mind. If you are thinking about implementing a Montessori method in your home, I highly, highly recommend that you um, participate in some type of formal training. The Montessori method is very specific in how you guide the child and <clears throat> and how you can encourage that child to make progress, to consider other choices. You don't ever want to force them to become involved in an activity that they are not interested in. But as a teacher and as their parent, you want to guide them to explore other options sometimes. Training, formal training, is the best way to really become a professional, become an expert at how to do that. I worked in a Montessori school for a time period and coming from a public school background, it was very challenging to me to learn how to use the children's interests and how to use their desires and their skills to do enough of a push, but to allow it to be kind of led by them. So even if you're not going to do formal training, if you're interested in this method, I highly recommend that you do a lot of research on that. And there is a lot that you can find online to learn how to implement this properly. Otherwise, it could look more like an unschooling method if you are not providing appropriate materials um, and experiences for them. 
Another consideration is this method definitely lends better to elementary age students. When you get into middle and high school students, a lot of people do not feel it is as rigorous as other curriculum. So that might be something you want to think about. And then because it is child led, you need to be prepared that you might not be offering equal time to all subjects. If you have a child who is super interested in bugs and being outside, you might not be offering as much information as far as history or geography because really their interest is lying in that science right now. And that's great. Children go through phases of learning. I have seen that myself, but some parents have a hard time with that. Um, you might have a child that's really interested in numbers for a whole year and they make great progress in adding and subtracting and these types of mathematical concepts, but they are totally uninterested in phonics and letters and sounds at that point. And that's okay. With the Montessori method, it, that's a big reason I recommend the training. You learn how to incorporate that in there. You learn how to handle the ebb and flow of their interests and still provide a very holistic education. So, but those are some things you want to consider as you're looking at possibly putting this method in place in your home. Now, when I offer you some Montessori curriculum, again, it's kind of an oxymoron like the Montessori schedule because the curriculum is led by your child. It's led by their interests. So purchasing a curriculum set really goes against the whole philosophy of Montessori schooling. Um, there are families and there are curriculums that give you great guidance, that have things that you can download, you can print off, ideas of how of materials to offer. So that is the list that I'm going to give you right now. Um, it's a list of some great websites to check out, some great programs to review. But you want to remember that, say I purchase a year's worth of themes, I'm going to want to offer those to my child based on their interest level. So I'm not going to push a study about planets if they are, are totally uninterested in that. Okay. So some great um, resources for you. Let me pull them up here. These are four websites for programs I would check out if I was interested in Montessori schooling. Um, the first two you can see are kind of for younger ages, okay? Montessori for Everyone and Montessori for Mom have, the, the second two, actually have downloadables, printables, things that you can um, use immediately in your home. Montessori by Mom was developed by a mom who used the Montessori philosophy to homeschool her children all the way through high school. So that's a fantastic resource if you're looking at doing this long term. Again, remember, you might choose Montessori as the ideal method for your home this year, next year, the year after. And you might decide that as they get older, you want something more structured. That's fine. That's the beauty of homeschooling, is the ability to change with your child, to change with your home, to change with your family, to change with the needs that you have in that moment. Montessori is a beautiful method, um, but I cannot emphasize enough the need to really do some research and some training if you're wanting to implement this effectively in your home. How do I know if Montessori is for me? I want something that is guided by my child, okay? Only there, I'm, I'm focused on allowing them to learn based on their interests. I want them to have a lot of tactile opportunities using manipulatives to learn skills, basic skills. 
And I have a trust that my child will provide the structure when they need and provide the unstructure when they need. We know that every child has a different limit of attention, a different limit of what they're willing to do for a time period. So I believe in the idea that my child is able to provide that for themselves as they grow. Um, if you feel that those are things that you believe in, this might be a great method for you to research more and get more information on. A quick reminder, all of these sessions that I'm doing are not the end all be all of the method. If you find one that you're interested in, I highly recommend you do a lot more research on it or read more about it. And a note for my upcoming classes, if you are like, I love hearing about all of this, but I don't even know where to start. I, I can't choose a method. I can't, you know, I have no idea where to even begin my journey with this. Then make sure to keep, to follow my page, make sure to keep updated and the class that I will be teaching about where do I begin or how do I start is going to be fantastic for you. I ask you to please share this video with friends that you know are interested in homeschooling, share my page with friends that you know are interested in homeschooling. My goal over the next couple of months as schools are closing down is to start building you up as a home educator because I know that you can be successful doing this and I want to give you the tools that you need to have a fantastic homeschooling spurt, whether it be for one month next fall, six months next fall, or whether you're setting out on a journey till the end of elementary school or the end of high school even. So thank you for listening. Please share this with your friends. I know there's thousands of people interested in homeschooling right now. I will be offering classes through the entire summer to get you ready to start on that journey when you're when you are ready. I hope to see you all tomorrow morning. We'll be talking about unit studies. Thanks. Bye.